Donald Trump had a fundraiser in Beverly Hills, California last week, and it was in the home of a healthcare tycoon by the name of Lee C. Sampson. Now, his goal was to raise $5 million. We're unclear as to whether or not he did raise that money, but we did send our crew to this home in order to see what the hubbub was all about. And there were some anti Trump protesters along with Trump supporters hoping to get a glimpse of Trump as he was walking into this fundraiser. So let's take a quick look at the first video. I kind of had this weird feeling about Trump at first, but like down deep inside, like before he announced, I kind of was always like in my mind, I'm like, that'd be really cool if he ran. Like a businessman running for president, like that's totally different. That'd be really cool if he ran. I just feel like they're kind of beating a dead horse. I don't know what their movement's really helping. Um, especially with this anti-fascism thing. I feel like the way they're acting towards us and towards people that don't agree with them is kind of fascist um, itself. So um, not accepting our views and thinking their views are superior, that's fascism as well. So I don't understand that. I don't think that's what fascism is. Um, but people get to share their opinions. So if they disagree with you, they get to protest. That's part of a democracy. I'm pretty sure that's the opposite of fascism. I'm pretty sure that's a democracy when everyone shares their opinions. And then by the way, you have a political contest as to whose opinions are better called elections. So now if you wanna say, hey, listen, I like Donald Trump, that's your business, okay? But they get to do a protest as well, that's their business. And but it, you know, look, a lot of Trump supporters, they really don't know anything. So. I mean, he literally don't, he's like, I don't know what they're protesting about. I don't know what they're upset at Trump about. Really? <laughs> I mean, I don't know if we've got a couple of hours here, <laughs> but there's certainly plenty of material. And he seems genuinely flummoxed, like, well, how could you possibly say anything against Trump? Yeah, well, let's see some more. Let's take a look. People that say he's a racist and stuff, they, it's all from just something they heard from media or the news. Um, back whenever he, the beginning of the campaign, whenever he said, "Oh, I, would, I don't want people from," uh, he said something about, "I don't want people from." They're saying that it's not from Mexico, like they don't want anybody from Mexico. But a lot of the stuff's out of context. If you watch the whole two-hour rally that he's actually talking, you get the full context and get what he's saying. And he's not a racist. Like his history, he was never called a racist until he became president. Was running for president. He's received. Awards from the NAWP, whatever that you know organization is, with Jesse Jackson and Reverend Sharpen on his side. He's never been a racist, you know. Um, so that's kind of what I feel about those people. I think they're just misinformed. <laughs> oh, I love wow. the irony of him saying they're misinformed. <laughs> okay, uh, he didn't. <laughs> what do you say that? That was. No, we're doomed, yeah, can, can, we're doomed, we're doomed, know, we're doomed. Know, like these people exist. And it's not that I disagree with them politically, it's that we're dealing with a population, some percentage of the country that ha that lives in a different world, that has no idea what's going on. He has no idea what's going on. Do you really not know what Trump said about Mexicans? He called them rapists and murderers. Wait. He didn't just say, I don't want them in the country. He referred, he said they're sending, they're not sending their best. They're sending rapists and, they're send and criminals. And criminals. I mean, okay, so that, and Trump's not racist? Uh, how about the whole debacle with the Central Park Five? After they were cleared of any criminality and Trump still wanted them executed. He still wanted the death penalty for the Central Park Five. Uh, they were black. Uh, what about discrimination in housing, which he has been accused of? I mean, how many examples do you need? But here's the thing, he probably, either he doesn't know or he's heard these things, but has made excuses like, oh, he was taken out of context. I love the taken out of context BS excuse that people use. It drives me nuts. I, I, I'm just stuck on that he doesn't know the letters of NAACP. I mean, I was like NCAA, uh, IMDB, something. I mean, he, was, he really tripped over those. Yeah. And then, you know, that thing with Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton. No, that's not that thing with Jesse that, that Jackson they gave and for. Al Sharpton. Okay. Uh, so. Uh, Going back to the housing discrimination, the, the Trump family was sued for that uh, because they would systemically, uh, systematically, I should say, uh, exclude African Americans from housing, uh, which is of course illegal, and and they had to pay fines, etc. So in essence, the Trump family uh, did a no vacancy sign uh, as long as you were black uh, for their properties, uh, and now here's Donald Trump, literally tweeting on Sunday. Uh, 
we're all full in America. We can't take any more immigrants. Okay, another no vacancy sign. Uh, so he doesn't want Latinos. He doesn't want African Americans. Uh, and uh, and and the Central Park Five, there, he wanted them executed in the first place. And so when you say nobody thought I called him a racist beforehand, that's not true. I called him a racist. Anyone that knew his history of systematically discriminating against black people in this country called him a racist. And then to say the Central Park Five, even though they were exonerated, they didn't do it. They found the guy who actually did do the rape of the poor woman in Central Park. He's like, they probably did something anyway. Unbelievable. I mean, I mean, did he say that? Yeah, that I didn't hear. Yeah, I mean, so the full page ad in the New York Times about they should be executed. That I. Yeah, no he's been racist his whole life, uh, but you don't care to know that because that's inconvenient for, for you. And the last one, although we can go on and on, is I want a total and complete shutdown of Muslims in the country. So that's not bigoted. Like every month, 1.6 billion Muslims, they're all guilty. Now, what do we have? We have one right wing terrorist attack after another after another here in America, domestic terrorism. It's not the Muslims, it's the right wingers. He referred to neo Nazis and white supremacists who were chanting, the Jews will not replace us, as very fine people. He said they're very fine people. Come on, yeah. come on. I don't understand we what you guys are getting worlds. upset about. We live in different worlds. I don't know how it got this bad, where, where you have people who are. I don't know, it's, is it willful ignorance or is it really just a giant failure by the media? Because I feel like the media has done a pretty decent job covering his racist statements. So how did he miss it? How did that guy miss it? How does he not know what the NAACP is? What is going on? Yeah, well, we gotta I, shut it down until we figure out what the hell is going on. Well, I'd love to shut him down so we can oh, figure out I thought you were shut down on. the NAACP. No, 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 maybe the NCAA though. So let's hear from <laughs> let's hear from Darlene. She is also a Trump supporter. For the first time in many years, I have hope that our country is going in the right direction. And I'm here because I want President Trump to know that people in California do love him and that we do uh, we're glad that he is our president. He gets a lot of bad press. And he needs to know that he is supported here as well. No, he's not. Yeah. So thank God it's <laughs> actually a minority. But yeah, they, the Trump supporters do live among us. Uh, we do the show out of uh, LA as well. Uh, I have told this story many times. I've got a, a neighbor who's got a QAnon bumper sticker. Uh, so they're everywhere. Uh, but uh, no, overall, the majority of Californians despise Donald Trump. So let me give you some more details about this fundraiser. Tickets were uh, ranging from $15,000 to $50,000 for a photo with Trump, who has a rarely visited home of his own nearby. If you really want to climb on the Trump train, big Republican spenders have ponied up $150,000 to join in uh, a 4.45 p.m. roundtable with the incumbent Friday afternoon, and that's according to the invite. And I want to give you some more information about the home that this fundraiser was in. So as I mentioned, this was hosted by a healthcare tycoon. I'm sure Donald Trump is going to do a lot to make healthcare affordable for all of us, right? Lee Sampson is his name, and the home is, Jesus Christ, two. It makes me want to cry reading it. Uh, 22,000 square feet. Uh, it is a luxury site. Rob reports 2012 Ultimate Home Award. That's what it received. And also, the New York Times uh, wrote an article about this home, and it's referred to as uh, the king of the mega mansion. If you want to know where your healthcare uh, money went, that's where it went. Yeah. Uh, did, and they you? say that we can't afford Medicare for all. Uh, in reality, our healthcare costs in this country are double every other developed country, Canada, Japan, Germany, etc. Why is it double? Well, the executives who run those companies, they need larger mansions. I don't understand why rich people can't hire good interior designers. Like because they're gaudy, like Trump. <laughs> what was that? Yeah. Unacceptable. Anyway. So yeah, no, look, what, this is the donor class. Uh, this is why when we have federal background checks being supported by 97% of Americans, we can't get federal background checks. Because politicians like Donald Trump are sleaze and they work for their donors. So he said on the campaign trail uh, that we we're gonna negotiate drug prices. He's like, that doesn't make any sense. Why don't we negotiate with them? He gets into office, these guys throw him uh, fundraisers trying to raise, what was it, five million? Uh, five million. Uh, five million a pop. Uh, $50,000 to take a picture with him, $150,000 for the worst roundtable I've ever heard in my life. 
And uh, and all of a sudden he's like, oh, we don't need to negotiate drug prices. So he's done nothing about no, that. No, no, but it's even worse than that. Trump <coughs> never says that they're not gonna negotiate on drug prices. In the beginning of this year, Trump claimed that he had lower drug prices, just as pharmaceutical companies had increased drug prices. Yeah, and lying as usual, didn't do anything to, to help the situation at all. Our healthcare expenses are still completely not, uh, uh, out of control. And But that guy's got a giant mansion. And, and he made a, a list of best mega mansions or whatever. And he's got so much money left over that he's donating it to Donald Trump along with all his rich buddies in supposedly liberal Hollywood, right? So a lot of the people who live in LA might be liberal, but the executives are not liberal. Uh, when it comes to economic issues, they are deeply conservative. They love Donald Trump and they can't wait to give him money. Why? Because it's a good return on investment. Because they know Donald Trump is exactly the kind of corrupt politician that is gonna give them everything they want which is this broken healthcare system. On the go, don't worry, we got you covered. You can still listen to TYT at our new podcast network. Find us on Apple Podcasts, the Google Play Store, or at tyt.com slash podcast.